Shruti, first congratulations for the success of your second single title, She is a Hero, for which Niranjan, you have uh, written the additional lyrics. That's right. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into creating a song. So what was the trigger or the basic seed behind this song? I think basically I, I sit at the piano and um, I'm usually very desperate to write at the piano because I've been taken away to shoot a movie. So when I come back, I'm like yearning to write something. This was um, more non-autobiographical, but also extremely so. Um, it wasn't about Shruti. It was about women who all around who can relate to it. And not just that, anyone who feels the presence and the value of a woman in their life. And that's basically how it started. Nirajan, would you like to add to that? I I, basically, I don't even, I mean, she says I've contributed to the song, but honestly. No, no. Before he says any of this stuff, I want to tell you first. There are two, three people only in my life who get any of my songs and ideas first and Niranjan is one of them. <laughs> so, so it's always fun to hear, like even otherwise when I'm not collaborating with her on lyrics or anything, she always is kind enough to play her scratch to me. She always sends me stuff that she's creating. Sometimes I'm there in the afternoons lounging around while she's on the piano. and So it's it's uh, it's been happening a lot. This is the first time where she had a song and then she felt that there were a few lines that needed to be in Hindi. And she asked me if I'd do it and I was really happy. And it wasn't even like a process, honestly. Just now when you were saying that it's a lot of hard work and all, yes, it's a lot of hard work for Shruti. But this particular song, I was sitting in her drawing room. We had just finished lunch. She played the song to me and she said, this is the portion I need in Hindi. And there and then we sort of exchanged lines and the lines were written and it was done. So Vishal, you also understand that like, writing lyrics on the fly is really easy for Niranjana Yanga. <laughs> <laughs> so what is a big message that you think that song is carrying and which you wanted to convey? For me, basically, it is to visually what we were trying to represent is the past, present and the future. Looked at through the gaze of appreciation, be it male, female, daughter, sister, mother. Um... And I also feel that vocally for me, it was really exciting because I was writing as a general narrative and I kept using the word she, which included me, but so many versions and I had to write a little out of my self in terms of like, she's a believer is something that applies to me, but I don't know if I'm as compassionate or benevolent as a lot of women I've met. So I was writing it from their perspective. And I think what is really valuable to me is that this message can mean different things to you, to Niranjan, to myself. But we all have these powerful women in our lives. And if it made you remember that, that's what I wanted. Uh, you know, In the music video, we saw your mom, your sister appearing in the background along with others. Were there any memories attached to those photos, Shruti? Oh, no. So ours literally was we told our family members to shoot themselves in landscape mode and send it to us. So that's what those videos were. And they were extremely annoyed because they were busy in other things, I'm sure. Especially my sister was like, yeah, yeah, I'll send it, Akka. You know, and uh, but there is one poignant moment in that vid in that portion, which is Karan Parik, our guitar player. His mom actually passed away when he was very young. And that's why she's the only photograph in that whole sequence. And I just feel that to be most, most poignant because as I think Niranjan can speak and I can speak is our mother's influences don't end when they leave us. Uh, they continue. And that's why we used a projector for that portion because they have projected their hopes and dreams on us. You know, both of you have worked on another song as well. That was uh, for the film uh, D-Day. The song was, of course, called Alvida, which was written by Niranjan and Shruti. You was, of course, one of the singers of the song. And also you acted in that film, especially yeah. in that song. Uh, was that your uh, first creative coll collaboration? So yes. Niranjan, you should say when we first met. <laughs> so uh, Our so friends are I'm... sick of this story, oh, by the no, way. No, of course, I know, but I'm, I'm thinking this creative... Yes, collaboration, collaboration began from there. Honestly, it was uh, it was not directly between me and Shruti on uh, because Nikhil had already. I mean, I was already writing the songs for the film. I had collaborated with Shankar, Esan, and Loy, and that tune had been done song. It was when they said that Shruti is singing it. I was really excited because she was also going to act in it, and I often feel that. Uh, you know, when, when you do dual role in, in movies, like dual role, when I say like you, you play two different roles of two different professions in the same film, 
um it really helps like for instance being a screen writer and a lyricist for the same film always helps me so i knew that for oh, shruti it would really help if she was the one who's singing the song and then eventually she's the one who's the song is being picturized upon so so i i was very excited and then we met and she was very unwell that day i remember she had very high fever on the day she recorded this song and i told nikhil that that's the best thing that has happened because the texture that we got for alvida alvida where every time she says it it was because she was so unwell and it really it really worked out very well but yeah that was our first uh, creative collaboration there and you actually also produced the short film uh, devi that that's was right. that 2020 uh, starring shruti hasan yes, that's right. like like this song that film also had a message uh, of women empowerment uh, when do you oh my think god yeah <laughs> when do you think we'll see maybe a comedy written by niranjan anger starring shruti hasan our when... life is a comedy <laughs> yeah honestly i laugh a lot when i'm with shruti because i think i, I think the way she she even has uh, 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 the ability to say the most profound things in such a simple and very humorous way so i'm always laughing with her but yeah if i write a comedy 100% she will be a part of it because i i know we'll be laughing through the making of the film and we'll be laughing at things that most people don't even understand, understand <laughs> or or even uh, acknowledge so yeah it's going to be great fun let's see hopefully i will be able to write a comedy first and secondly hopefully i'll have a great role for shruti in it and then we'll collaborate i i personally would love to work with niranjan on something really dark and tragic and hopeless because i think we'd both be really good at that yeah we kind of niranjan is a god mama and he doesn't just like own it that's the difference <laughs> shruti this is your second single as a creative mind do you identify more with music than to act no i mean i would say maybe if you'd ask me this question even 8 years ago then the honest truth would have been yes i feel more freedom and exploration in music but um the more i've had time with myself especially after the break i took i've realized what films have given me on very many levels and um, the deepest thing that is the most valuable thing it's given me is it's made me a better musician and storyteller in the field of music so having the responsibility of playing other women and their lives women i don't know and i've adopted the responsibility of have has given me a perspective to parts of myself where i can allow characters of shruti to come out and that's only come after acting my music would not be anywhere close to where it is today had i not had cinema in my life so sure. now the the exploration is like you know like an infinite loop because when i go to films i have playlists for characters and i give them a sound and that helps me and when i come into music i take the 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 lessons from acting to make my song better so i can't really choose niranjan uh, every song has a story you have written films like my name is khan and dil mushkil and kalo na ho to name a few you know in today's world where movies duration is getting shorter in this scenario how challenging is it for a screenwriter to leave a place for a song in a movie at the script level i it's it's evolving definitely um I, as we know that it started off with lip sync and then we lost lip sync and became background song now it was a mixture in between now we've completely gotten rid of lip sync but i think it's an evolution i don't think music will ever ever leave movies i don't think that's possible i mean you know yes the song and dance routine but we still find ways and means of adding that to the story sometimes it pulls the story along sometimes it gives you a break from the you know like the monotony of a story in whatever form or way we constantly use music especially songs in movies as as a part is become a part of our dna it's become a part of not only the artistic side to storytelling but it's also become a part of the commerce now because music rights have become so important that they are now included in the budget of the movie even while you are planning production so as a result it it's it's become so intrinsic that it's going to be very difficult to separate it and i don't think we should because i think it's really makes a, a films unique and we managed to do it in a way and we managed to evolve also over a period of years in the usage of music so i i i don't see any reason to uh, you know fix something that is not broken Mm. Sure, you know, uh, 
both of you write like Shruti you have also written your first song you know people say when we are angry or sad we revert to a language in which expressing our emotions come is naturally to us and that language could be uh, your mother tongue do you agree with this i guess my mother tongue is english then cuz <laughs> honestly uh, i get curse words in indian languages when i'm angry but everything else because i think i'm um, that weird intersection especially being born closer to the 90s is we had access to technology movies much more than say niranjan's generation did you know so globalization we are products much more and like by default niranjan is more rooted in indian culture only because of how much television cd roms internet easy access for us also i went to an english medium school i only watched english films listened to english music read english books not to say there wasn't tamil hindi songs and cinema around me but this became the medium of understanding art and communicating my art and so i am that i am the uh, you know in the in the bracket of the the language leftover people you know <laughs> and mm-hmm. where is someone like niranjan is really fascinating to me because i miss that fluency because i i only converse in indian languages whereas i know that you know he speaks tamil marathi hindi he's really proficient at writing in hindi and urdu like it's really easy for him as well as english poetry so i'm really envious of his um you know flex on language i i, I switch actually the by uh, even though i'm a south indian born brought up in a south indian family and language was a very big part of our growing up but i think i'm uh, technically a maharashtrian because my go to language is always marathi and uh, it's always been from childhood and so so i think marathi i would say is something that i'm uh, i go back to when i have to feel really comfortable but honestly i do that with tamil as well so it's not uh, one or the other sometimes you also english but yeah marathi i would say i'm most comfortable but when he's with me and even when we're at a fancy party we're just no, we're off in our corner speaking in tamil yeah. and tamil, nobody gets it see the thing is tamil also the, the reason why i wear also speaking in ta- uh, tamil with uh, shuti is because i know very few people who come from the same background as me and who have the same linguistic uh, what do you call it rhythm in their families as my family does So, so it's very rare to meet that kind of uh, you know families in in bombay so so when i met her so i just yeah, the same thing happens to me with even marathi if i know that somebody is extremely fluent in a language and they understand the intricacy of that language then i would like to speak to them in marathi because it's easier communication is faster communication and it just i don't know there's something really beautiful about it you know uh, niranjan you of course have written some of the coolest dialogues uh, for some of the very popular blockbusters like teen din ladki in uh, <laughs> aur aapke aansu bade wafadar hain aapki ijazat ke bina bahar nahi nikalte would you like to please uh, jog your memory and uh, tell us if there's a back story behind these lines of uh, these li- I, mean, i mean a lot of these lines are also in the scene intrinsically when the screenplay is written so these these are not what i actually the lines that i uh, would think that i uh, people would remember in my movies are the ones which even if you pull out of the context of the movie they should still apply to people in real life because in story what happens those lines and those lines being impactful within the scene is one thing of course that's that's very essential and that's very required in all kinds of uh dialogue writing or story writing but the lines that even if you pull out of context from the film and just write them as a couplet on a piece of paper they should make sense that's always been my endeavor when i wrote lines and and a large part of my lines have somehow succeeded in attaining that i can say that because even colono's lines that i wrote 20 years ago so still people yeah. put them back to me so i i presume that that what i really set out to achieve with especially these hindi film dialogue lines i think i've 
to to a great extent achieved and that that's what i love about that so yeah which are the line which are mostly quoted back to so you saying i would say like like in jism there is a line which 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 is my personal favorite which didn't register too much with the audiences but i like it when uh, she goes uh, when she asks john ke kya ye rishta aise khatam hona zaruri hai and he turns around and he says rishte hamesha buri tarah hi khatam hote hain warna khatam hi nahi hote so now this is a line that is that is very relevant in the film definitely but it's also relevant if you just write it down as or even even to take a dile mushkil's line where you say ke uh, ek tarfa pyar ki taakat hi kuch aur hoti hai ye aur rishton ki tarah do hisson mein nahi bat now this is something that you can quote anywhere it doesn't necessarily have to be within the scenario of that movie or about that character or that situation i think these are the kind of lines that i personally prefer to write and my endeavor is to try and find these spaces in the movies that i write dialogue for sure and finally you know to both of you how important is solitude for an artist oh god we are the king and queen of hermit <laughs> solitude behavior i think i i was very very uh, fine during covid completely by myself and i hope but this thing somewhere that you know if you can't enjoy your com- own company why would anybody else and i truly believe that but i think i go through phases there are phases where i just don't want to meet anyone i just want to be by myself and you know uh, like i always feel there are phases in a human's life one is nurturing and one is expressing so when yeah. you're going through the nurturing phase and you want to be alone because you want to put things in you don't want to expend anything that that is within you and then there is an expression space when you're just you know you filled enough of yourself and now you want to express what you're feeling or your perspective of it so you go through these phases of solitude and uh, but also i feel when you have to work then none of this matters if i have a deadline where i have to deliver something within two days then solitude or no solitude you have yeah, to exactly piece of paper and write so that also happens a lot of times it's not always that you have the luxury of you know saying okay okay now 10 days i'll take off and i'll not see anybody yeah. and finish this and come back sometimes you have to just turn things in within a day thank you so much for your time and all the best thank you vishal thank, thank you, you. for having us thank you thank you so much <laughs>